Well, on the prayer tablet, there uh, we want you to let you know that Dick Housel uh, is in the hospital, uh, doing better this morning, and just pray for him and for Patty as uh, she works to direct his care. Uh, just a, an update, just a praise update. Uh, Jim Rini is closing in on four years cancer-free. Of course, you want to keep in prayer that it's you know next month or so hold some of those tests and checks that. Uh, <coughs> that uh, we all, that, that cancer patients go through to find out if anything has occurred. Uh, so, and also I would highlight that, uh, that uh, Shirley King, Terry Prouty's mother, um, they, she passed away and there'll be a graveside service uh, tomorrow. You could pray for that family. And, um, and I was talking with Terry uh, that she said, yeah, that, uh, I've been coming to church Broadway for a long time. There's just people don't know that I come. I've been greeted by, as a visitor, like by, you know, um, years in, because she would, want, it's for a good reason. Sometimes she's been at the second service, sometimes she's been at the first. So uh, you might want to reach out to her and uh, wish her family <coughs> the best. As we, um, we got the, the news of the shootings in Butler, the attempt on President Trump's life, uh, we we're thankful that, uh, that he was spared that. We grieve along with the families of people who have died and also for those who are recovering. And it, it, is, a good, it is a pressing time to pray for a nation um, and that you know, we, we now and then become aware we're living in the, in the midst of history that is unfolding. I'm glad we do not have uh, a moment in history where a presidential candidate was assassinated. Makes a, it makes a, it changes so much. Uh, just so keep in prayer for the country uh, as we as we take in the next next few days and on through the future. If you could be in prayer with me. Lord, we ask that your son Jesus who laid his hands on the sick and healed them all. That he would be uh, the hand that, that heals and makes well. We pray for Dick Housel. We pray for continued good news for Jim Rainey, for Peggy Neeb and Jacob Hoagland and Stanley Fisher and Pam Miller, Brittany Douglas. Lord, we, we have other patients and other people we, we name in our hearts. We name Nancy Ebersbaugh and Risa Nilamis. We ask, Lord, for, for all that seek to recover from injuries, for diseases to, to be defeated by treatment, for things that are long-term and do not easily resolve. We ask your blessing and your grace. Be with those who are, who are um, confined to home or nursing home. Would you lighten their days and add to them strength? Would you be the presence and the and the and the just the the, the guiding guiding life within when then when activity has diminished? Be alongside those that whose minds are where they don't communicate with us. Help them be close to you in heart. Lord, we pray for the church that's not free, where there is violence known every day, where there are threats from the community all the time. And we ask, Lord, that these that must walk in and through time, knowing hostility and rejection, might have from you, Lord, the strength and the help that they need. Set captives free that have been imprisoned for the faith. Be alongside us this week, if it be a week of, of wondering what the test results might be, or what an outcome will be of a, of a job application. Be with those who are who are looking uh, to, to better provide for, for families and loved ones. Be with those that are served by the, the Dover, New Philadelphia Food Pantry. Lord, bless the churches in this community. We pray, Lord, that your gospel be proclaimed, known, and responded to, and held in, in joyous honor through the churches in this community. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for their needs, asking for you to bless them, Lord. Bless among them those that mourn, those that are waiting at bedsides in hospice. 
those that, that this was a week of particular struggle or trouble. Help us, Lord, also in, in all our goodness, good, good, good events and, and, and pleasant days. Help us, Lord, give us grace to be thankful. Ask that you bless this church. Bless the Bible school that is to come and just, Lord, we, we pray for the opportunity to minister and to, and to present your son to the, to the children that come. Find us, look out for us in, in our work. Find us together in this effort. Lord, we pray that you hear the unspoken requests that come forth from our hearts. And Lord, help us. Help us to abide and respond to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And um, so we have, well, now see, I was sitting down there, right there, and knew the next, very next thing I was going to say, if you think I could remember it now. Well, but I'm pretty sure it was that, uh, that first off, uh, we, will, we want to remind you that for the communion meal, which will come follow right after the service, that it's open to all. I uh, encourage people to come if they love the Lord. Um, that uh, we'll pass out the bread and the cup in, in, one at a time, and we'll, we'll all be there holding a piece of bread, and I'll give instruction for, for us to eat together and also with a cup. And at that point, you have a little cup in your hand, and there'll be, be a place to, to dispose of those on the way out. And, um, and it, it, it could almost be a, a test to see if you're paying attention. I actually forgot to pray for the nation, and for peace. And if you could just bless me with the, the attention, Lord. Lord, we ask that uh, you do have your hand upon our election. You have a hand upon our life of our nation, our political discourse. Lord, we are, we are thankful for the sparing of, of President Trump's life. We just do ask, Lord, that you would be upon um, this nation, be its Lord, be its guide, be its provider, help people to look to you in all things. And Lord, we pray for this world where there's so many that long for the day of peace and safety. Just ask the Lord that you, you would be blessing us to an answer to the prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. But in all war-torn places, Lord, we ask that the time would soon come when they would be at peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, um, we're going to be reading from uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. Uh, if you want to know what, what I will think to preach about for, uh, for a, I, I suppose next Sunday will be a shorter and more fun sermon because it'll be the Bible school program and that. And I, I wouldn't usually, you know, lower the tone of a day like that. But, but I will, if you want to know where I'll be preaching and is, is, is the next couple following verses will be from John, 1 John chapter 2 into 1 John chapter 3. So you have your chance this week to look at that, and when I'm done with next week's sermon, to say to yourself, well, I could have done better than that, and if that's, if that's your wish. Uh, if you're wondering if you have, um, am I going through, it, through the book one, one verse, one or two verses at a time? Yes, yes, I am. Um, and and you, you've, been, you've actually walked with me through one verse one to now two verse 29. You just didn't notice because we've been doing it over four years' time. And, um, <clears throat> is, and so the text for ten, today is, And now little children abide in him, so that when he appears we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. And so, Lord, we long for your life to be expressed in our life. Lord, teach us to abide and be close to you. Teach us, Lord, to draw from you, to be open in a channel for your spirit to flow through our lives for your son to be expressed in all that we say and do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I am familiar with, with what's been going on in John's first letter to the church, in 1 John, and, and I can tell you that something, something occurred in these verses that uh, that. You, well, you say, well, uh, well. in other words, in these verses, two, two uh, articles of the faith are brought up that haven't been brought up so far in John's letter. 
and they are the coming of Christ and the new birth. Now, this sets up kind of an expectation when I'm, when I'm reading that. Well, he's, he, this is his first mention in this, in this letter of the, the coming of our Lord and also the first mention of a new birth. And you'd almost be waiting for him to say, okay, and now let me give you seven points about the coming of our Lord. Or let me give you a 35-minute sermon about you must be born again. Both things would be true. Both things would be important. But John, as he is led by the Holy Spirit, keeps a tighter focus because he has been talking in this letter about abiding with Jesus. Abiding is that concept where you're walking alongside in close company with Jesus. You're not going through life saying, it's a good thing Jesus is 25 yards off to that one side. I don't want to be seen with him. I don't want to be identified with him. No, you're walking tightly close to Jesus. You're not walking so far, far from him that you cannot hear his voice. You're walking so close to him you can just nearly hear his heartbeat. He talks about abiding in Jesus, and so when he, you know, it's no surprise, and now little children abide in him. And if you want to talk about the significance of the new birth, you, he says you're going to abide in him, and the context is as a little child will abide. If he is talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he does, he says that at that coming you do not want to be ashamed. He, is, he has a certain context where the verses that came before this in chapter 2, he mentions disruptions, challenges, trouble, because he even brings up the word the Antichrist. In other words, they have encountered the turmoil of teaching that denies the lordship of Jesus Christ and the gospel. That's, that's the, the section before this in chapter 2. The church has encountered an upsurge in people who would essentially say, de deny that Jesus is the Son of the Father, and also deny that we may rely upon the cross, that we should rely upon the cross for our salvation. In other words, God's plan is denied, and God's identity in Jesus Christ is denied. Now, you, you don't... This isn't a time where there would potentially be confusion and turmoil. Now, it is here so that we might learn that we are taking a walk of discipleship, and discipleship is exercising our faith through time. How long am I going to be a disciple? As long as I am on this earth, and then when I'm, I'm in glory, I'm a follower of Christ, and I need him that much. I'll never need him less. But discipleship in this world is a discipleship as we walk through time, and it, is, it makes only perfect sense that we're going to encounter challenges to the faith. And John addresses this confusion and this heartache and this pain. Now, I'm not sure confusion is the word, because I'm not sure how many of us would raise our hand and say, well, I hear so many voices in this world, I am confused. I don't know. The group I'm hanging with, you, and, and myself, I'm not confused. I have opinions. I agree with all my opinions. That means I'm not, a, not confused. But it grieves me to see people wander from the faith. It grieves me to see the faith challenged as it is, and challenges there indeed are. I've had good three conversations in the last two weeks with people who had questions or challenges to the living text of the faith. You know, we're going to do the Apostles' Creed, and we're going to say he was born of the Vir conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. And then you can write on to suffered under Pontius Pilate, the, that Christ is the Son of the Father and that the cross is central to the salvation that he brings. And though, you, you know, unless you go and ask for it on Facebook and, and start texting people and, and arguing with all the, all the little non-Christian sites or something, you, you're not going to get challenges like that. But do understand, we're going we're gonna to have a week where there will be troubles... There will be things lifted up, and very few people will say, but Jesus is Lord of this earth. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He was sent this world as God's Son, and I have confidence in that. We will look at evil things, and very few people in the world that we walk in will say, do you know it's remarkable that you can be forgiven of even that evil through the cross of Christ? So we have a world that they may not always grab you by the collar and say, I don't believe in the cross of Christ, but they, they ignore it. So we have our challenges, and we're going to walk through that 
as disciples through time, and John would give us this counsel. Do it as little children. Do it through abiding with Christ. Little t- in the context of this confusion, of this challenge, he says, now little children abide with him. Walk closely along with Jesus. Ah, I note that he did not say there are many challenges to the faith and to the questions of right and wrong in this world. You need a, you need a class in Christian moral philosophy. He doesn't say that. He says, you know, I love Christian moral philosophy. I love knowing more about the faith. It's life-giving and powerful the more you, that you know. But he would say, in the context of this challenge, believe in his coming and trust in him and abide in him. Walk closely alongside him as a little child. You are born of him, and what is in focus as our new birth in Christ is our status as his little children. And, you know, he's called them children before. In this verse, he says little children. Childlings is, is pretty much how the, how the literal translation from the Greek would be. He is emphasizing how small you are toddlers. This is how you are to fra- face this. And, you know, in this world, you're going to hear Satan's doctrine, which is that you shouldn't, you, there's no point in trusting in the cross. You will hear Satan's counsel, which says you should despair. You will hear the heart of Satan at work in this world, which is love the world, live in a place of pride, embrace lives, hatred, unforgiveness. You will hear all these things, and in, the, in trying to hold a whole church in a town that must face these kind of challenges, he says, Abide in me, abide in Jesus as little children, and understand that Jesus comes. They were not to see the fulfillment of all the kingdom that God will establish on this earth. We do not know what generation will see that, but the coming of our Lord to people is just that. He comes, and as a parent to a frightened child, he flips the light on and dispels the darkness. Uh, He will bring humility to counter our pride. He'll bring guidance to counter our foolishness. And when we are weak and we are suffering and we are in despair, he will come with his Holy Spirit and give us confidence. The believers will know if they abide in him as a little child, the fullness of God going on in their life. In other words, you will get all of God that you can hold and all that you will need to face what is ahead. And the key is knowing that you abide as a little child. This is not the same thing as seeing a a raft of problems, all challenges, questions about the faith, abroad in the culture, different teachings, and saying, I must know more. I enjoy knowing, knowing more. But he's saying, abide as little children. Little children know a lot. You wouldn't, you, 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 we will constantly look at a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and say, look what they have learned to do. Look how, they, look how they know just how to fit in with the family. Look how they know to order the dog about. Look how they know to help and help pick up their toys. We, we rejoice in that. I, I, you can write and, and observe forever the growth of a child. By the time they're two years old, they know the names of everything in their environment. Pretty much. That's what they say. You could point to it and say, what's that? And they can tell you what the word for it is. I'd like to see you learn 2,000 new words this year. It is amazing, the accomplishment. But what the child needs to know primarily is to abide with you. To know that status of belonging in that family, being loved in that family, and to walk near you. Now, I raised seven children. And people would often ask, how did you raise seven children? That's a lot. And most of you have heard me say something along the lines that the strategy you need for three children as opposed to two is just applies right to, the, to up to seven or whatever. Because when I had two children, they were, they were real hard to keep corralled, but you could do one hand on this one and one hand on this one and guide them unto, unto where they needeth to go. Now, when there is a third child, you do not have any more than two hands. 
and it's, it's, it's limited effectiveness trying to hook the other one with your foot, you know, or something. Uh, we mentioned, somebody asked me about shoulders. Can you just put them on your shoulder? No, because you have to kind of hunch like this to hold their arms, their legs pinned. and doesn't work as well. You have to have a child that knows to abide with you, that its place is walking preferably close alongside you. Once a child learned that, the child has learned what is needful. I grew up in a, in a stage where we still had the multi-story department store. Mom would get a, make dad drive her out the night or get on a bus and we'd go down to Lazarus department store downtown Columbus and you would, you would get to ride on elevators with an operator man. You could talk to mom about going to the sixth floor where the toys were. It was, it was great. Now, I was a young child, and Mom always wanted to go to the basement where the sales were. Incredibly boring. I could look at socks and pants and shirts and things. I was not interested in that. I wandered away. Now, it was winter, and my mom was wearing a nice kind of a full cloth coat. You know, it was red. I remember it just like it was yesterday, heavy wool coat. And and I realized I was not abiding with my mother, and I began to be frightened, and so I go to abide by my mother. I spotted by the coat, and I reach up and hold the hand there and sit there in the confidence of abiding, and I look up at the face, and that is not mom. In fact, the face was about as not mom as it could possibly be. Really a shocking moment. Same coat, though. They probably, they obviously, they shopped at the same store, man realize what I needed was to abide with mom, walk closely alongside. And when I found her, I wasn't, wasn't separated for very long. Realize when I'm in the place where I'm supposed to be, when I'm abiding as a little child, it doesn't mean I'm more useful or, or more capable. I'm only wiser by a smidgen, but I'm still fulfilling everything as a little child I should do. We do not expect children, nor does Jesus expect his little children, well, to be always capable, always making good decisions, always useful to all the purposes that heaven would have. He expects us to learn to abide with him, recognizing that we are as those little children who have been born of him That is what will help us to be where we need to be so that we belong. Because he will come as a light in the darkness. He will come as hope to despair. We can count that our troubles are limited by his loving hand, and he will be near. And John says, you you do not want to be ashamed at that point. When Jesus comes marvelously present with you in your trouble, you don't want to be there contented with living with lies. You don't want to be with pride instead of humility. You don't want to be with anger instead of love. You don't want to be with unforgiveness instead of channeling his grace. This all comes of walking close to God. We do not expect little children to know all the answers. You will know much. You should learn to know more, but remember, Everything you know about walk, walking in the faith, everything you can fathom and figure out is still as nothing to this walking close to Christ. Giving up the path that you would have in life so that you can follow his path that much more closely. I can see in my mind's eye my oldest son with his four children. They're all quite young, five, five and under and um, trying to get them all to the table about a year ago, you know. One has to be carried. One has to be towed. One has to be coaxed. You can't even find the other one, you know. You have to go looking for that one. When it's time for dinner. And yeah, they're herding cats, man. But once you get them to the table, they're his cats. They're his. They belong at that table. The presence is here among us, and we belong at this table to which you are invited to come.
And just, yeah, I'm thankful that we have the Apostles' Creed there. We'll begin with the Declaration of the Faith of the Church. If you join with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we remember that Jesus, when he was with his disciples the night which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And after supper was over, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink ye all of this, for this cup is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. If you could join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And Lord, we thank and bless you that you have called us to this table, undeserving as we are, even as your children. We are called to dine with you and to feed upon your life. Lord, make this indeed be your body, that is broken and given to us, and your blood that is shed for us. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of the Holy Spirit, for this church which, which, would, in which we are present here, for your church throughout the world, and that you indeed bless those that suffer for the faith. And bring this all before you in Jesus' name. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for thee, may it preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this, and remember that Christ, Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with thanksgiving.
the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was poured out for thee, may I preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and drink this in the remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Join us now one more time. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death your perfect love is casting out fear even when i'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life i won't turn back i know you are near and i will fear no evil My God is with me. If my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. that 
is coming, that is coming. for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will pray. Oh, oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the